This video is to cover the basic operation of a garage hanging heater. This happens to be a Modine a 60,000 BTU hot dog. I think most of them are kind of similar. But I'm making this video because I just had to go through a repair on this. And uh, the videos I had on YouTube really weren't as helpful as I thought they could have been. And I, I figured I've used videos so often maybe I should make one to help out. But So let me... Uh, what I thought I'd do is just walk through the basic operation of them and what the components are, and then that can help, kind of help you give you a guide of uh, of troubleshooting of these things. So the first thing you have is you have the gas coming in. You'll have a gas line with a shutoff valve uh, coming into the unit, and it goes through some black pipe, and then into this um, gadget called the the gas valve. And this one is inside of this unit. It may be outside of the unit as well, but Wherever it is, it's going to be in line of your gas because it's the valves that control the metering of the gas. And then when the valves open, it feeds the burners uh, right here. There happens to be four burners on here. The, the gas flows out and then it's drawn um, into the tubes inside of the, the ductwork that, uh, where the, the air is forced over it and then the hot air comes out. So that's, that's basically how the gas works. Um, yours may have a pilot. This one does not have a pilot. So as far as I know, there's just one valve in here that opens up all the gas. Um, you may have a separate pilot valve that opens, um, but that should all be internal to the uh, gas valve. The next is the electrical coming in. It's gonna be 120 or whatever you, you're using. And there'll be a cutoff switch, just like a regular furnace. And I have it off right now. Whenever you have these open, you want to make sure you have the power off. Unlike um, garage or unlike regular furnaces, there's no switch on the panel. So when you take the panel off, if you don't have that cutoff turned off, you, you it will operate. So you want to make sure that's off. And of course, you don't want to be messing with any of the wiring in here unless you really know what you're doing. Um, so, and I'm not an electrician or anything like that. So I'm just going to show you the basic operation. So. Um, the next most important board that comes in is the is the control board here, and um, that's where your your 120 volts will come in and and feed down to the control panel here. And um, there's two voltages that operate inside of the unit. There's a, the 120 volt line voltage, but then there's also a step down voltage um, that runs some of the the smaller elements. So there's a transformer that that moves the uh, or steps the voltage down. Um, usually, I think it's 24 volts. And so the 120 line voltage um, really powers mainly the motors, the the, the, um, the exhaust motor, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then the main blower motor, uh, which is on the, the fan motor on the back here. And then in in my case, because I don't have a pilot, I the, the heating element, the igniter that ignites the gas is also 120. Then everything else runs on on 24 volts. So, so those are uh, those are and then those are the major components. I'll talk about the other things, which are all mostly safety related, um, as we go through the operation. So the first thing that happens is you have your uh, thermostat lines coming in, the uh, white, red, and green. They're coming from your thermostat. And by the way, most of them have like a little wiring diagram. And then um, even uh, on mine, I have the the parts the serial number and and some basic parts shown here you know the replacement part numbers that's essential for working on these is knowing the model and serial number it's like the dna the genetic code of what's in here it's not just a random number and then also the gas valve has uh, some diagnostics this little led here um flashes and does different things and then there's a diagnostic thing up so if there's things going wrong with your gas valve uh, there's usually a diagnostic on it. Okay, so back to the basic operation. So the, the first thing that happens is your thermostat will send um, a call for heat to the control board. And the first thing that it does then is starts building up a vacuum inside of the combustion chamber so that when it starts introducing gases and, and light everything, that all of the, all of the, um, um, exhaust or unburned gases are, are exhausted out of the back here, out through the stack. So in mine, the, the exhaust motor is right here. So that's the first thing that turns on. So the voltage comes in, or the call for heat comes in, turns on this motor, and then makes sure that it's drawing air 
out of the combustion chamber, which is on the other side of that, that wall back there. And so that's the first thing that happens. And so when you turn it on, that's the motor you hear turning in the fan. Then as a safety device, you'll see this little tube coming off of the combustion chamber too. That's a, a vacuum tube and it comes down to this thing called the pressure switch. And what that does is it's a safety that makes sure that you're drawing a vacuum through the combustion chamber. So you're clearing all of the exhaust gases and also clearing any unburned um, natural gas. Um, for my um, problem that I was having, I came into the garage and it was blowing just like normal. The main blower motor was running, <clears throat> but there was no heat coming out of it. And so one of the things that's interesting is, is I'll get to is I'm wondering if I was just how long I was exhausting or if I was exhausting natural gas just out into the open air back there. That doesn't sound like a very safe thing, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. So first thing that happens is you build up that vacuum in the combustion chamber and exhaust everything out of there. Make sure it's going to pressure switch, then checks that. So after this is running for a few seconds, you'll hear a click. And that click is that exhaust valve saying, okay, go ahead and send voltage to the igniter. And so the, the pressure switch then tells the the, and it goes through this and, th and then down to the control panel and, and up back in here at the top, right here is the heating element. So the first thing that happens is inside here, you'll see it glow red. So once you have it, once you know you're exhausting everything, the pressure switch sends, says, okay. And then the heating element turns on. And once the heating element is turned on and hot, then the gas valve you'll hear another louder click and that's turning on the gas to flow into the burners and then it ignites when it when it comes in contact with the uh with the heating element and as i said you might have a pilot and really it's the same thing the instead of lighting the heating element it lights the pilot and then once the pilot's going it feeds the main uh, main valve so once it does that then you have a sensor down here right here that checks to make sure that all the burners are burning. So you, it lights up at the top burner and then just like your your barbecue, you know, you can, the, all the valves when they turn on, blah, 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 lights all these, all four burners and then it makes sure this last burner is burning. So that's the, the um, I think flame detector they call it. So once that's operating, it knows everything's burning and everything's running. Then you hear another click and that's the main motor coming on. And then it starts blowing the hot air out. And um, there's a couple of other safety features that are that are included. And you'll see these little button sensors, one at the bottom, and then I have one at the top. And I guess that's all they need, but the, what these are called is, um, the, I think they're called roll-off roll sensors. And let me see if I can get in there so you can see them. Yeah, so you can see it right there. So what that does is, if, as you see right around the burner, oh, let me get in here, it's, not, it's focusing on my finger. So what it's, what it's looking for is to make sure that the flame is entirely going into the combustion area and not rolling off and out in the surrounding area. You don't want, you don't want flame outside of the burner area. So this is detecting if that flame protrudes too much, it'll heat up the sensor and the sensor will say, ah, you're, you're not burning correctly and it'll shut the thing down. And there's another one down here. And I guess they decide that just checking these two burners are enough. I guess who cares if they roll off over here? I don't know, what, whatever. But, but that's what that's for. It's a safety to make sure that you're not, not improperly burning um, around the combustion chamber, that it's all being consumed within the combustion chamber. And then there's a, another safety right here, which is called the high limit switch. And this is just, this is inside the, 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 burn, or the burner area or the, the ductwork area to make sure that the thing's not producing too much heat. And, and the way it controls the amount of heat is the, the pressure of the, I think, and maybe I shouldn't even say it because I'm not a, I'm not a guy, but, but I, I presume the only way you can, can change the temperature in there would be either getting too much gas um, fed to the burners and so it's burning too hot, I don't know. But anyway, this makes sure that it's not overheating. If it overheats, then it shuts down too. So you have several safety items. You have the first, the pressure switch. You always gotta be drawing a vacuum so that you're always exhausting um, out of the, the exhaust fumes out of the, the back. <clears throat> you have the roll-offs that make sure that you're not um, burning um, too excessively outside of the burners. And then you have the flame sensor to make sure all the burners are burning. So you're not introducing natural gas into um, the, the chamber here. And then also the high temperature. But really that's it. That's how it works. And so as you're troubleshooting, 
you know, you just follow these clicks. As I said, the first thing that happens is this motor turns on. You get that spinning. If, you, if this isn't working, then that's the first thing to check. You know, if nothing happens, if you get no clicks at all, I mean, it's one of the first things to check, or the board. You know, that's, the board may be bad itself. Or, you know, but anyway, the, the, basic, the basic fundamental elements to check, um, you know, make sure that's spinning. Make sure this pressure sensor clicks. You get a light click. Then the element will heat up. And then a few seconds later, you should hear a couple of louder clicks as the gas valve opens up. Then you hear the ignition, you hear the whoom, where the, all the gas burners ignite. And that goes for a few seconds. It makes sure that, that this is all, that, that you're sensing flame down at the bottom. And then the blower motor kicks on. And then it should stay running. And if it doesn't, if it stops after that, you may have a high temp limit problem. Uh, you may have a roll off problem. Or uh, there could be something in the gas valve even um, not working correctly. Remember, you have these diagnostics over here that can help. But anyway, I, I, uh, I thought I'd put this out here because, uh, like I said, I didn't have anything like this ex explained to me. Um, so I hope this helps if you have a problem with yours.